Hi everyone, it's Christine from Ever After Paper Crafts and today I wanted to share with you how I created these two cards. And today there's a couple different techniques that I used in these cards, um, but today I want to focus on the no line water coloring of the images of the image and we're just going to color I'm going to color Rapunzel with you um, on camera. So let me go ahead and first just show you the cards. And if you can see, it's picking up slightly on the camera. Um, she's got a lot of sparkle on her dress. To create the background, I will be doing another video on how I created these backgrounds, but they were done with Distress Ink watercoloring on watercolor paper. Um, but again, for today's video, I'm just going to focus on coloring Rapunzel. But I did want to show you these two cards. Both were done with no line coloring using Zig clear brush markers and Distress uh, Ink and a water brush. So these are the two cards fully put together. I heat embossed the, um, the sentiments with um, just Versamark black onyx ink and clear embossing powder from Stampin' Up! And then everything else was either water colored or um, no line colored with water coloring techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need to do this technique the way that I did it is you're going to need a, your stamp set. I chose the mermaid stamp was from the mermaid princess set from Kindred Stamps and the Rapunzel which is the image we're going to be working on today was from the Tower Princess set from Kindred, Kindred Stamps. These are such cute stamps. I really loved working with them. So the first thing that I did is I took my antique linen distress ink. And I stamped it on Bristol Smooth cardstock, and you can barely see it there, and that's what you want. You want a very light ink that works with water coloring and distress inks do. So I went ahead and already off camera stamped the image so we can go ahead and get started. You're also going to need your Zig markers. For the Rapunzel image, I used yellow, I used purple, I used light violet. Those are the two colors that I used for her dress. And then for her skin, I used flesh color, I used blush, and then for her rosy cheeks, I used a light, um, or yes, I'm sorry, an almond pink. And those are the only markers that I used. And then a water brush. Now, if you don't have a water brush, you can use a paint brush and just dip it in water to make the water flow and, and, and the ink flow. So that's another option. Now I'm going to zoom in as best I can here so hopefully you can see me coloring um, and if this doesn't turn out good leave me a comment and I will try to do it again I am new to um, te this technology of filming these um, these videos so I'm doing the best that I can um, so hopefully you'll be able to see so the first thing I'm gonna color is her hair now when I do this coloring what I do is I start at the line where the ink is and I do a very light line where I think there's going to be shadows. So there's kind of going to be shadows around her face and then on the, on the very outside. And you kind of want the ink to get up against this line because it's going to react with the distress ink and further blend that line into your painting. So that's all the ink I'm going to put down and now I'm going to take my water brush and you want to do this very slowly with no line coloring. I'm simply going in a circular motion and I'm pulling that color away from the line. Now I'm ultimately for my finished card for this project cutting this image out and I don't have coordinating dies for this image. So I wouldn't uh, care if I was just creating this for myself. I wouldn't care if I went outside of the lines out here. Um, but I'm going to pretend for the purposes of the video that um, I'm not, that I'm going to have a die cut that shows a little bit of white or that I'm just, this is, this is what I'm going with. And in other words, I'm going to pretend that I have to keep it inside the line so I can show you how I dealt with that issue. And what I do is I just take the tip of my water brush and again you can use a, paint, a, a very narrow very skinny paintbrush watercolor brush if you don't have a water brush and I go right up against the line and I pull that color towards the white space in my image and then once I get it away from the edge I kind of just go in a circular motion to spread it around I'm going to do the same thing down here 
And then over here, I'm also going to do the same thing. So there's gonna be some shading around the base of her chin and up against her face. And then so, so we're just pulling this darker color where we put our line into the image. And I'm just going very slow. I'm taking my time. I'm not in a rush as I do this. Okay, now I notice that I did not put enough ink down here to fully cover the image. So I wanna put some more by her face down here and by her dress, because there's gonna be some shading there. And again, I think I've said this in other videos, I am definitely not an artist and I don't pretend to be, so I don't really know where you know light sources are and that kind of thing. I just sort of do my best, but at the end of the day, it looks good to me if there's some gradient of color um, and 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 you know some places are lighter than others some places are darker than others and it really shows the shading so that is my goal um, when I'm doing this now if I was an artist I'd probably be able to come in and to give you better tips but I am just a novice when it comes to this so I just again I do the best that I can um, but I just like to see uh, you know just shading um, just shading that's all that matters to me it doesn't really matter to me if it makes um, I guess perspective or, or, or sense in terms of an art eye. Um, I'm just a card maker and I just like, like there to be variation of color. So as you can see, I did down here and I'm going to do, um, I just take each section at a time. So now I'm going to do this little section of hair right here and I'm just going to put some of my marker uh, right there up against her dress where there would definitely be shading. And then I'm going to blend that color out. Okay, so that is the whole top part of her hair and these two bottom sections. Now we're gonna do these two sections. See, as you can see, I'm really just taking my time. I'm not in a rush. I'm gonna put my line down with my marker very lightly right up against the edge. And then I'm going to take my water brush and I'm going to pull that color away from the line so I don't go outside of it or blend it into her dress. And I'm just, pulling that color in. And then once I've got it in, I just sort of do circular motions to get the white part covered up. And it's okay to leave a little bit of white because as, as we do when we're coloring with Copic markers, you know, that, that enhances your shaded area and it enhances the, the, to the viewer that there is in fact shading there. So it's absolutely okay to leave a little white paper behind. Don't, don't be intimidated by that and think that, hey, that doesn't look right or what have you. Um, I like that look. I think that it really adds to the, um, the shading and what you're trying to accomplish. So here she is. That's her hair completely done. Now, what's one thing that you want to do when you're using a water brush is you want to keep a piece of paper towel nearby. And this is one that I've just folded up and I've used it in other places before. But so I'm done with my yellow marker and I just want to wipe my, mar my water brush off. Okay, so now we're going to move on. I'm gonna put the cap on my yellow and we're gonna do now the light purple for the top of her dress. And that color is light violet. So what we're gonna do is remove that cap. Now, we are going to, what I kind of envision is that there's going to be a little bit of shading of the dress up here, kind of where her hair um, comes and then here in her armpit down here to the to the V that the dress makes or the top of the dress rather makes and then the same thing over here so down here watch the arm and then over here same thing on this shoulder and then so set this aside take your water brush and again you're gonna pull that color and this is a very light violet color and it, the water, the color, you'll see when we do the bottom of the dress in the darker purple, that color, the darker purple really, really moves. It really reacts with the water. This lighter purple doesn't react as well. So I found when I was doing the dress originally uh, for the card sample that I really had to uh, add a couple different layers. So we're going to go back and that's what's great about these zig markers is they let you do this and you can go back and add more color wherever you need it to get the blended look that you're looking for. So see, right now it looks absolutely horrid, right? But 
once we get this all blended out, it's going to look really, really pretty. So that sleeve's looking good. Now we wanna make sure that we get all this color out and we don't wanna show solid lines. And so that's why I kind of use a circular motion and pull that color out as best as I can. There's going to be obviously a little bit of a dark line where the color was first put down. And that's okay because in real life, when you're looking at shadows, you're going to see that. So that's, I, that doesn't really bother me, um, but I do try to blend it out as best as I can. But again, this is such a light violet that I had to go through with actually three different shades. I mean, three different um, layers, rather, to, to make it move the way that I wanted it to move. But that is looking better. So I'm, I'm relatively happy with that. And now I think we can move on to the dark purple for the, for the base of her dress. It's actually just purple, I think, is the color on the marker. Yeah, the bottom of the dress is actually just purple. So let me pull her back down. So you, and pull her up to the camera so you can see a little bit better. And now we're going to work on the bottom of the dress. And you will notice, you will see immediately what I'm talking about with how much better this particular purple moves. So you wanna be really careful about that when you're pulling it away from the line because once this particular color hits the water or once the water hits this color, it's gonna move. So you'll see what I mean right now. It is, it's very, very, very reactive to the water. So again, I'm just pulling the color away from the line and in towards my dress. can see what I was talking about that color is really moving now I keep the paper towel because sometimes when you have colors like this that really react to the marker I mean I'm sorry to the water you just kind of want to wipe your brush off in between um, you know kind of going back in and uh, moving it around again because otherwise it'll be too thick and it'll go outside those lines Okay, so that is looking good to me. I'm gonna to try to soften out this line over here just a smidge. And remember, once this dries, um, it's going to, to blend a little bit more into the ink that formed those lines from stamping the image. So it's still it's not going to look as hard of a line once we're completely finished. So there's her dress, the bottom part, part of her dress. Now, ideally, what you wanna do when you're working with different zig markers. You want to let it dry before you introduce another color because for example, right here, her, it, whoops, I'm off the camera, I apologize. Right here is her arm. Now, if I were to start bringing in flesh tones right now and I accidentally got a little bit of the new color into the purple down here or my brush accidentally went down into the purple, I'm gonna have a purple arm. So generally, I just kind of let it air dry, but if I'm in a rush, I'll just take my heat gun and heat set it. To quicken the process. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and do our face. Now, and our, our um, face and arms, rather. And I'm going to be using blush and flesh color, aptly named. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do, again, is I'm gonna clean off my brush to get the purple off the tip. And then I'm going to take my blush first. It is the darker of the two markers. And so I'm going to put this where I would envision it being the darkest, which is right around her hairline and her chin. I'm just going to do the face first. Again, I just work in sections. 
Then I'm going to take the flesh color because again, if you'll recall from an earlier video that I did, these markers, you don't have to have water. They will blend with each other without water, which is great. So I'm blending these two colors. And again, I'm doing it just like I would do with Copics. I'm just pulling the color, the darker color into the lighter color in a circular motion to, to get the harshness of the line to go away and to blend the two colors together. And now I'm going to take, sorry, I keep hitting the camera, I apologize. I'm going to take my water brush and just pull some of that into the center of her face and wipe off my brush. Now I don't want to do the blush right away. I want to let that face dry a little bit. So I'm going to move right down to her neck and to her arms and then um, we'll go back and do the blush on her cheeks. So let me go ahead here and we'll do under her chin and kind of to the side. And for this one, because it's such a small space, I'm probably not even going to pull the water in. Yeah, I'm just gonna do the, the markers themselves for that. And then we're gonna do the arm. We're gonna start with this back arm here and I'm gonna do that because I feel like the outside by her hair would have some shadow. And then we're gonna blend that out with the flesh tone and then take our water brush and lightly pull that in. Same thing with the other arm. We're gonna take the darker of the two colors, which, whoops, I grabbed the wrong one, which is actually the blush. And we're going to color underneath her arm, I mean her sleeve there, and then up against her hair. And a little bit right there, because a little bit of purple blended into that. And so we wanna get rid of the, the purple on her arm. And then we're gonna take our flesh color, which is the lighter color, and blend, use that to blend that darker color out. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of the water and blend it like that. Now, the last step is the cheeks. And we're gonna go ahead um, and take a chance here. And this is almond pink. And all I'm gonna do is make two little circles for rosy cheeks. And again, ideally I would have let that dry a little bit longer, but for the purposes of the video, I wanted to go ahead and do it so you guys could see. And then the last step that I do is I take a black, this is just a jelly roll pen. You can get these at Michael's, very inexpensive. You can, if you have the Copic Multiliner, you can use that. Any black marker that kind of is, is a more permanent in nature marker will do. And I'm going to draw her or uh, draw over the line that the, that the ink made when I stamped the image for her eyes and her smile because we don't want those to be com to completely disappear with that ink being so soft. So that is how I do my no line coloring. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And there she is. So remember, I just did this with the camera right in front of me and with my arms coming around to the camera and working. So I promise you, if I can do this, and I'm definitely, I've said, I've said it numerous times, I'm not an artist. I'm not artistically inclined whatsoever. I can't even draw stick people, um, but I can do this. And it makes me feel like an artist when I'm able to color something like this. It's really, really cool. So, um, if I can do it, I guess my point is, if I can do it, you guys can do this. So I encourage you to give it a try. All you need for this particular card, we only used one, two, three, four, five, six Zig markers. That's it. That's all we used. And with Zigs, you don't have to buy them in sets. You can buy them individually, just like you can buy Copic markers individually. I happen to have the 80 set of the zig markers there's only 80 colors you don't need that many i promise you you can get away with you know very few very few indeed so um we only used eight markers for this particular image and uh it's very very inexpensive the water brush i think was like five dollars um and it can be reused over and over and over and over again there is no limitation to how long you can use the water brush unless i guess unless you damage the bristles or something but if you're you know, careful with it, it could last you for a very long time. So this is very, very inexpensive. And the result I think is absolutely fabulous. She really looks kind of like an artist did her. Here's the original. And as you can see, maybe, I'm not sure. Again, it's a really gloomy day here, but I did add a lot of Wink of Stella to her dress. Um, so she's very sparkly in real life. Make sure if you add Wink of Stella, 
um, this is the clear. If you add it, make sure you wait until your image is completely dry. So you definitely want to wait till she's dry to, to use that. Otherwise, the liquid base of the Wink of Stella will react with the markers and it'll start blending again and it can create kind of a mess. So I guess that's it for today, guys. Please let me know if you have any questions. I encourage you to check out my blog. I will put the link to my blog in the description box of this video. Um, and I will have some detailed pictures so you can really see the coloring up close as well as the card. Don't forget to stop back either tomorrow, which would be Friday or Saturday. And I will have another video up on how I did the backgrounds for both of these cards. Um, and I will show you how to do that, which is watercoloring with distress inks. Um, I will also have links on my blog to all of the products that I use to create these cards if you're interested. And I will also have those products listed in the description box of the YouTube video down below. So I hope that you will give this a try. If you do, I would love to see what you created. So come back here and send me a link or email me or whatever. I would love to see what you guys do with this technique. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email or leave me a comment or you know here on YouTube or on my blog, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, this is really um, my first time trying this. And and so, um, honestly, I, if I can do it, anyone can. So I hope you'll give it a try. I hope this video was helpful. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.